Hello and welcome to this ArtCam demonstration where I'll be showing you how we can create this book embossing die using ArtCam Express 2015 with a couple of modules installed. So I'll go straight across to ArtCam Express and you see on the left hand side here I've got two modules added. So I've got the advanced 2D machining module which enables us to do rest machining and add bridges, lead in lead out moves. We've also got the smart engraving module added which means we can create text with sharp edges and you'll see more about that when I actually create that toolpath. We've got many other modules and if you want to find out about those just go to our website www.artcam.com forward slash express. Okay so I'm going to get started. The first thing I want to do is create a new model a height of 210, width of 290, I'm going to have the resolution all the way up so it's high and have my origin in the bottom left hand corner. You can move this about by clicking on this diagram. So you can have it in all the corners and the centre. I also want my units to be millimetres and say OK. Now my model is created. So now I want to split my model into three separate sections so I can start creating the design for the front cover, the spine and the back. So I'm going to drag out a guideline from the left hand side here and drop it somewhere around there. I can then put it in the correct position. So I can right click, edit guideline and I'm going to position it at 130 millimeters. And then I'm going to lock that and apply. Close that down. Now I can drag out another guideline, right click, edit guideline, and I'll position this one at 160 millimeters. Lock and apply. So now I have my spine defined there, and these guidelines are locked so I can't move them by accident. So now I'm just going to encompass the front cover, the spine and the back cover with a rectangle each. And this is so I can start creating my designs and so I have vectors for the toolpath later on. So I'm going to start creating my first rectangle, which is going to go around my front cover for now. Input the correct values, width of 130, height of 210, centre point 225, 105. So create. I'll create one round, around the spine. Width of 30, height of 210, centre point 145, 105. And then the final one. Width of 130, height of 210, centre point 65, 105, and say create. Now we'll close that down. So now I've got these rectangles. I'm going to shift select the front and the back cover, offset vectors, offset distance of 8 millimetres inwards with sharp corners. And we can select the resulting offset. We want to keep our originals. So now the way I'm going to design this, I'm actually going to have the front cover here to start with and the back cover here and have the design the right way around. And then at the very end, I'm going to mirror the entire thing. And that's just so I can create my design easier. So now this is the front cover. I'm going to select this vector and enter node editing mode which is this icon. I'm going to zoom in and I'm going to add an extra point in here. I want to add an extra point in the center of this line so I don't have to hover over the center as long as I press M on the keyboard it will insert a midpoint there. So I can now select this point or node and move it up so I'm moving it up incrementally but if I want to move it up a fixed distance I can hit alt and then an arrow key on my keyboard and we get this dialog here and we can choose to 
use a fixed nudge distance. I'm going to input a distance of 25 millimeters and say OK. So we've moved this guy up now. Now I'm going to select all of my bottom three nodes and move them up 25 millimeters. Now I'm going to exit node editing mode and offset this vector. So go to my offset, offset distance of 3 millimeters, inwards and sharp corners. So now I've got the border for my front cover. I can start creating some text. So I'm going to say create vector text and I can click anywhere on my front cover and I'm going to start typing. So I'm going to use capital letters and type world. I'll just zoom in there, select my text and I'm going to set it to be size 30 points and you can choose between points, millimeters and inches there. Now I think my letters look a little bit close together for what I want so I can just increase the character spacing. I'm going to input 5% of the space. I'm going to say create. So we can move this into a more sensible position if we want to. And now I'm going to start creating some more text. So click anywhere in the front cover and I'm going to start typing book, enter, day. This time I want my text to be a bit bigger so I'm going to set the size to be 55 points. I want them centrally aligned which I've got them as and I also want my line spacing to be minus 10. Character spacing to be the same as before. So I'll say create move these over here and then finally I'll create a new text box and I'm going to type the 5th of March 2015 okay so that's when World Book Day is in the UK and that's what this book embossing die is advertising so I can edit that text it obviously wants to be much smaller than that I want to set it to be size 12 points I want to set it to be all bold and then because I've set it to be bold we're going to have to increase the spacing slightly so I'm going to put character spacing as 10% and then if you zoom in you can see that the the M and the A are still quite close together so I can just select these two and then manually increase the spacing there and you'll see they separate out a bit once you're happy you can say create now I want to position all of my text centrally in the front cover so I can hold down my shift key and select everything. Then with my shift key still selected, select one of these offset vectors and I can say center horizontally and they all jump into the correct position. So now I want to nudge them slightly into place although I don't want to move them by 25 millimeters which I want I, which is what I set earlier. I can say Alt arrow key and I can change my nudge distance to be 5 millimeters, for example. Nudge it, these up like so until I'm happy with them. So now I want to input my Delcam Arcam logo at the bottom here. So what I'm going to do now is save my model. Uh, I'm just going to save it onto a folder on my desktop and call it book die and that's going to save as a dot art file and I can now close this model down. So in order to get the vectors for my ArtCam logo I can open up a new model so here I have an image of my ArtCam logo and I can simply drag and drop that into ArtCam to create the new model. OK, and we can just use the model size that it's come in as. And you'll see at the bottom here, we've got all the colours that make up this logo.
So first of all, I want to reduce the number of colors. You can see it automatically jumps to 32 colors. And I'm going to just bring it all the way down so we've only got two there and say OK. Now I've only got two colors. White's my primary, blue's my secondary. I can bitmap to vector. So I want to create a boundary, but we could also create a center line if you wanted to. Speckle size of 100, smoothness of 75, and we want to create a boundary around our blue color, which is the secondary color. And we'll say create vectors. So they're created in magenta. You can toggle the bitmap off and on and inspect your vectors if you want to. Now I'm happy with everything there, so I can box select everything and export these. So I go vectors, export, and I can just call them logo. And that's going to save by default as a .eps file. Save. So now I can close this model down. No need for me to save my changes, as I've already exported and saved the vectors that I want. And I can open up my book die dot art, which I just saved. And we're back to where we were. So I can say vectors, import, import my logo, and say open. Here we have a dialogue asking us where we want to position our vectors and I'm just going to say position in the centre of my new model. So here's our logo, it's ginormous compared to the size of our model and I can resize this immediately. So with it selected I can go to the transform tool and we can change the size in either millimetres or a percentage of the original and you can see I've got this lock on there which is linking my width and height so you can toggle that off and on you'll see the little lock there and that means we're not going to distort our logo so I'm going to scale or resize using a percentage of the original and I'm going to resize do 5% and say apply I can zoom back into my model and you can see we get a much more sensible logo size so now with this selected, I can shift select my offset vector. I'll just exit the transform tool and we can center horizontally. I can deselect them all and just select my grouped logo vectors and nudge those down 5mm at a time until we've got it in the correct position. If you're happy with it there, you can leave it or we can change the nudge distance by hitting alt and an arrow key on the keyboard we don't have to use a fixed nudge distance I can turn it off and say OK now when I nudge up and down the closer you are zoomed in to your model the smaller the distance that you're going to be nudging by so I'm happy with my front cover I'm just going to hit save before creating the text for the spine of my book. So I'm going to create vector text and I'm going to type world book day like so. I want to resize it to 30 points so I have it nice and big on the spine. At the moment everything's bold so I can turn off the boldness and I can just highlight the word book and I will make the word book bold and stand out and now I'm going to hit create once I've done this I want to rotate it 90 degrees so I can enter the transform tool you see on the right hand side here we can use the rotate functionality clockwise or anti-clockwise and I'm going to rotate 90 degrees clockwise and say apply close that down now I simply want to center this text in my spine vector. So with it selected, I can shift select my spine vector and you'll notice here our text has come in as grouped automatically, but we can ungroup that. And grouped text or grouped vectors always show as purple and single vectors or ungrouped vectors always show in magenta. So that's useful to know there. 
Now I can center vector and my text is now centralized in my spine. So last of all, in my vector creation, I need to finish off my book embossing die by creating the vectors for the back cover. So back covers of books often have the book blurb on there and so for the pur purpose of this demonstration I have some text from the World Book Day website saved in a Word document. So I'll just open that up. I can copy it and then inside ArcCam I can create vector text click in my model on the back cover and paste that and it's been created far too large so I can select it all and change my sizing so the blurb text wants to be 8 points centered we want it to be bold character spacing 5% and a line spacing of 0 and we'll say create now we've got that we can center horizontally so shift select our border and center horizontally like so now what we also need to do to this vector like we did with the front cover is offset and create our border so we'll offset distance of three and say OK. Now our text fix snugly in there. I can just nudge it down a bit to get it in a more suitable location. So now I'm going to create uh, the web address here for at the bottom of my back cover. And I'm just going to type it. So all lowercase WBD at education.co.uk I want to select it all I don't want it to be bold size 14 points spacing 0 and 0 I'm going to say create shift select my offset vector and center horizontally again I can just nudge him into position like so Again, I'm going to save my model and I want to have some vectors of a stack of books here. So I can close this model down, navigate to my folder where I've got my stack of books, it's just a JPEG, import that and again I want to create vectors from this image. So I'm going to go straight to my bitmap to vector functionality and you'll see that we've got the option to reduce colors inside bitmap to vector. So I'm reduce colors to 2 and say OK. So we've simplified our image. I want to create a boundary. I'll keep the same parameters as before and I want to create a boundary around my secondary color which is that gray color there and I'll say create vectors. So I can toggle my bitmap image off and on or change the transparency to inspect those vectors. If I'm happy, I can select them and export them. So we'll save those and close this model down. And I'll open up the model I created earlier for our book embossing die. So now I can import my vectors. So I've got a vectors import books.eps. Again, they're far too large for my model. So I need to resize them. This time I'm going to scale using millimeters. I set the width to be 55 millimeters and say apply. Now I can center horizontally in my offset vector. I can nudge them down to the right position. So I'm just using my arrow key now. Now I'm going to do a bit of vector editing now. If I zoom into this area here, you can see that these vectors are very close together 
and this may cause a problem if we have a very thin upstand of material. If I measure it I can actually see the distance so using my tape measure tool I can do one click, second click and then on the right hand side we're told the details of those two clicks. So we've got a di rough distance of 0 0.16 millimetres, which is tiny. So I'm actually going to increase that gap slightly. To select my vector, go into node editing mode, and I can start selecting some nodes and moving those outwards. Like so. And I can also move some of these inwards as well. And once you're happy with that, you can see you've got a much larger gap there, and you can go in and measure that again. And you will see we're now left with over a millimetre of material, so that's okay. So now I'm almost ready to start creating my toolpaths. What I need to do here is reverse all of my vectors. So I'm going to box select everything and mirror vectors a cross model and now I can start creating my toolpaths. I'm going to do one more thing first though and that is to isolate this logo here. So by that I mean I'm going to simply draw a rectangle around it. I can enter node editing Make sure it's the right size. So I'll just bring these out a little bit. And the reason for doing this is so I can go in with my smart engraver and machine these smaller areas more precisely and have nice sharp edges on the edge of my text. Now I just want to actually offset this vector by one millimeter so I have an overlap of when I'm doing my area clearance. So I'll offset outwards, I'll have radius corners, just one millimeter. So now I want to select the inner vector, the outer border, which encompasses the entire front cover, and my outer offset vector there, the outer offset vector, and then the vector that encompasses all of the back cover. Now, if I click on tool paths, I can create a 2D area clearance toolpath, start inputting my parameters there. So we'll have a finish depth of 2 millimeters, and I can start adding tools to my list. So I'm going to add a 5 millimeter end mill, and then the reason I can add more than one tool here and actually do rest machining is because I've got the advanced 2D machining module installed. So I'm going to say add, and we're going to add a 1.5 millimeter end mill and a 0 0.5 meter end mill. And then I'm simply going to say calculate. So we can have a look at that if we wanted to in the 2D view, or we can go across and view our simulation. So I can right click and simulate toolpath and we've removed all of the unwanted material. Now I want to go in with my smart engraving toolpath and machine all the detailed text and designs in there. So I'll go back to my 2D view. I'll hide the visibility of my 2D toolpath I just created. I want to select the correct vectors. So I want my logo, I want my outer vector which separates it off my inner borders, 
all of my text, my spine, the outer vector of the spine, and then the text, the books, and the web address. So I think that's everything now. I can hit toolpaths, and this is our smart engraving toolpath. And that's because we've got the smart engraving module in there. So we'll have the same finish depth of 2 millimeters. The vectors are on the surface. And I can start adding tools. This time I'm going to do the 5 millimeter again and the 1.5 again. But the last of all, I'm going to use an engraving tool, which is a 0 0.0530 degree conical flat. OK, and now I can add different parameters to each individual tool. So if I click on my end mill 1.5 you'll see all of the parameters set for that and I'm going to have an independent finish depth there. So we only want to machine in one millimeter rather than two. For my conical 0 0.05 I'm going to do corner sharpening, extend above the start depth. I'm going to extend 5 millimeters just so you can see that flick there and that's what's giving us the nice sharp edges to our text and to our corners. We only want to smart engrave the profile, profile only, and I'll do an independent finish depth again of 1 millimeter so we're not gouging our delicate conical flat into any stock material. Once I've done that I can hit calculate now you'll see our three toolpaths are created. If I zoom over here, I can show you what all the toolpaths are doing. So I can turn them all off. You'll see our 5mm end mill is coming in, removing most of the material there. Then we've got our 1.5, doing all the smaller areas. And then finally we've got our conical flat and these flicks here are the 5mm extension and that's just so you can see what we're doing there so we could have had a much smaller flick and obviously that would reduce machining time if we have a look at that on our 3D view if I zoom into that same area and just turn off the visibility of my first two tool paths and move it around you'll see that we've got these flicks here in the 3D view For view along the side, it's easier to see. Here's our flicks, and we've just extended that up five millimeters. So now I can simulate that. I can do each toolpath one at a time. So I can right click on my five millimeter simulate toolpath. Zoom in, have a look at that. Then we'll have our 1.5, and we're removing more material there still doesn't look like text though and then we'll have our conical flat and that comes in and picks out all of the smaller areas and it gives us these nice sharp edges on our text where our larger tool couldn't get in so when you're ready with that you can save all of your toolpaths so I click on toolpaths and say save toolpaths you'll see that I've got a different tool number for each of my tools and that's because I'm assuming I've got an automatic tool changing machine. I can browse where to put them. I'm just going to save it to the same folder on my desktop. Create a new folder. Toolpaths. And we'll just call it book die again. So then you can choose your post processor. You can save toolpaths to separate files if you have a manual tool changer. And you can also append toolpath details to file names. So that's useful if you've got a manual as well. So I'm just going to hit save now. And it looks like nothing's happened. But if I just go over to that folder, you can see that on my desktop in book die, I've got that new folder toolpaths. We'll open that up and we've got a tap file. So if I just open that up in Notepad, you can see our G code there. 
And that is everything that I'm going to show you today about how to create an embossing book die in ArtCam Express 2015 with two modules installed. So that's Advanced 2D Machining and Smart Engraving modules. Thanks very much for watching.